and whatever comes up in this moment is is what's authentic and relative to how I'm feeling in this point in time. And I think as we navigate uh, through this corridor tonight, which is around, you know, how can we uh, better move throughout the week or how can we lay a foundation so that we're able to better optimize ourselves um, through whatever it is that we're doing. And I hope that what I am about to share or what I do share tonight is able to translate um, into each of your guys' lives in, in whatever capacity. Um, and I think that's the powerful things with words is that there is this, words just aren't these things that are just <laughs> flowing in the air, right? And, and there's no weight or, or they're just moving. It's, there's, there's something powerful with words, and especially when it's spoken from a space of experience, spoken from a place of authenticity, and spoken from a place of truth. It has a way to pierce the conscious mind and even going through to the subconscious mind. And when you're able to open yourself up to receive words, to receive stories, to receive knowledge in whatever capacity, there's so much unseen there's an unseen impact of what that could mean for your life if you open yourself up to, to listen, to really start to contemplate uh, these kinds of things and how you could better impact your life in, in whatever way that is. And so through conversations with Rio, um, we've built a beautiful uh, relationship, uh, friendship, brotherhood um, over the recent couple of years. And when he brought this whakaro to life in terms of uh, eager beaver, um, he asked us if, if I wanted to get involved, and man, 100%, you know, super keen to be here. And just want to do a big shout out um, to the founders, the creators, um, and also to, to Jack and Morgan uh, for holding down the, the mental health or, or the wellness Wednesdays. And so I thought, man, how could I contribute to the space? And I was like, man, what if I come in on a Monday and, and offer some cordial, or offer some thoughts that could hopefully give each of you a bit of a kick up the ass or a bit of a insightful um um feast um to help you know with whatever it is that's going on so what's the best way to do that man and and for me it's like what is it that we need and i honestly feel it's it's way more than than motivation what if we were able to move to a space in our lives where we don't need to be motivated, but better yet, inspired. Motivation is temporary, right? Man, I just need to be motivated to go to the gym. And then once you get to the gym, like, then what? Where's the energy? You know, like there's a clear difference between motivation and inspiration. And, and the minute, the moment that you decide to shift your perspective or shift your mindset to be more inspired, there's a lot more, not just sustainable impact from that, but there's a regeneration impact that actually brings this level of consistency, um, discipline, and forward focus uh, to the end, to the end goal. And for me in particular, when we sort of start to think about inspiration in itself as well. We've got to look at the, those first two letters. There's in, right? It's the inspiration. Look within yourself, and, and what is it that really gets you excited? Is it your whānau? Is it, is it yourself? Is it putting yourself into a better situation? And once you're able to get very clear on what that is, it's easy to take the action after that. And we're so caught up in, in the sort of like space where... There's a lack of inspiration, therefore a lack of drive, therefore um, a lack of moving in that desired um, direction. And for me, I had to very, very much so learn and teach myself, like, what actually inspires me? And I remember this one significant moment in my life, and it was the moment that I consciously, this, I knew exactly where I was, I knew what I was doing, and I made this, this, this decision that has inspired me ever since. And that is to be the best version of myself. 
you know, to grow myself into a better individual, to grow myself into a better person. And as soon as I made that shift and made that decision, I can honestly tell you the inspiration has only grown since that moment because I found something that just not only made me feel good about myself, but it gave me the pathway to fulfillment. And when we can be fulfilled in what it is that we're doing, it changes the quality of your life in such a significant way. And it enables you to find the extraordinary moments in the ordinary moments. And that's what I think life is really about. It's about how can we live more fully in each and every moment? How can we be inspired in each and every moment? We we got to move away from feeling the sense of joy or the sense of happiness when we actually achieve something. We rob ourselves of so much goodness for one moment. And we miss all of these beautiful little moments along the journey to get there. And so that one decision just fully impacted my life and really moved me into that space of just being fully inspired on a constant day-to-day -day basis. Because when you're, when you're trying to be better or when you're trying to improve the quality of your life or you're trying to get closer to something that you can see in your mind, there has to be something driving that energy. There has to be something behind you that enables you to say no to certain things that puts you into a circle of friends or puts you into these different space spaces or sitting at different tables because it's that thing that is driving you. And one of my mentors told me that there's a lot of the time it's like we're pushing towards getting somewhere. We're pushing ourselves to either be wealthy, we're pushing ourselves to 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 work very hard. But when you're inspired and you know you're moving along the right path, you move from being pushed and forcing yourself along this pathway to then being pulled. And when you're being pulled into a direction and when you're being pulled by something, there's a different energy associated to that. It's like you're moving with the current as opposed to moving up the current. Right? And when we can be in that flow state, when we can be in that space of being pulled, of being in flow, Life is so abundant, Eti. Life is so abundant. And so anyone can come in at any time to ask a question, whether it is about what it is that you need right here in this moment. And I honestly feel that being honest with yourself is such an important step because you need to take ownership, you need to take accountability in order to even move move past that because if you're not being honest with yourself if you're not being true and authentic with yourself you just start walking around in circles right because you get to a certain point until you're pulled back you get to another point until you're pulled back because there's this lack of honesty there's this lack of um, desire to step into vulnerability Right, But once we step into that vulnerability and start to really see who we are, the things that we like, the things that we don't like, only then can we start to create a new version of yourself that's going to move you into that direction you want to move into. And I speak like so fired up about these things because you don't have to have a million dollars. You don't have to be, um, you know, creating your own business you can legit be just doing exactly what it is that you're doing now, but you're applying different energy. You've switched something in your mind that literally helps you see things through a new lens. You start to feel things. Deeply. Was that a question? Or was that someone just not muted? Kapwai. <laughs> so... Here we are, Tiwi. It's, it's Monday, right? And it's as simple as waking up and deciding how your day is going to be, right? A simple thing, something practical that you can take away from this conversation, from this corridor, is when you wake up, are you deciding how your day is going to be? Like, are you waking up and, and waking up being like, yo, today is going to be a good day? Or are you just waking up and going through the motions? When you wake up and you go through the motions, you actually are living in a way where you're on autopilot. 
you wake up, you do the same thing, you may brush your teeth, you may then have breakfast, you might scroll, and you're really in this automated kind of way of living. Whereas when you wake up and you make a decision that, man, today is going to be a good day, you're now way more alert, right? You might still do the same things, but you're bringing different energy. The energy that you bring to your day honestly matters, Fane. It really matters. And when you make that decision, it really shifts things in a significant way. All right? Well, I done it this morning. Me and Hinepania woke up. Right? We woke up. And I just said, today is going to be a good day. And guess what? Today has, has been a good day. And while I'm on that point, man, just happy Valentine's Day to all the lovebirds out there, Tefane. <laughs> man, for some of you who have partners and for you guys to be here, just want to just express my gratitude uh, to each and every one of you. But take that practical tip there, you know, just waking up and deciding. Another cool thing that you can attach to that to move yourself into a beautiful state and to be in a good state is when you put your feet onto the ground when you get out of bed, you put one down, say thank, and then put the next one down and say you, right? Starting your day in that space of gratitude, right? These are honestly practical tips that could just improve how you're feeling. And when you move in that space, it's like a domino effect. Good things just start to happen. And when good things aren't happening, at least bad things aren't. And that's still a good day. Right? So these are the things that you can do on a consistent day-to-day -day basis. But everything that I do, it starts on Sunday. Right? So my week starts, you know, yesterday on a Sunday, where I get clear on the things that I need to do, where I set myself an intention. And my intention coming into this week is to connect with my heart space. Right? To connect with my intuition to connect with it even more. So when I have a moment when I'm going through something, I bring myself back to my center. Kapai. And I just go through ticking all the things that I need to tick off. And when you tick off those things, it's like you collecting a dub. You're getting these little significant wins, you know, throughout your week, and it improves the sense of confidence within yourself. Kapai. So these are just some simple things that you can do to get your week started. And if you fellas have any questions, I'm just going to open it up for the next 20 minutes to half an hour. Uh, whether it is something that you're going through personally, uh, something that you've been struggling with, um, just come through and, and, and unmute yourself. And I'm keen to flow into some questions now. And there aren't no dumb questions. Yeah. Kia ora, my bro. It's Jack from Up to. How are you? Yeah, my boat. Good, thanks, cuz. How are you? Yeah, yeah, good, thank you, bro. Um, man, mean, mean, caught it all even like so far. I've taken away like so many golden gems as usual from you. <laughs> um, bro, just had a question. I remember when we done a potty, um, there was something that came up and I was real keen to really dive into that um, with you. And it was around sort of uh, our corridor, bro, with unlocking intimacy within and sort of allowing, <clears throat> excuse me, um, allowing yourself to tap into that when maybe you're naturally not so inclined to being really affectionate or showing heaps of love. I was keen to hear what your thoughts on that are, bro. Mm. Unlocking that part of you. You know, it's in you, but it's, it struggles to come out sometimes. Yo, and, and quickly before I get into that, brother Jack, quick story background with the bro Jack uh, from up to. I created a, like a, oh, not an online, but it was more so a series of workshops. And um, I put it out there and Jack um, ended up, uh, putting his hand up and wanting to come. But the thing that I didn't know is that Jack was driving from Auckland all the way to Fakatani once a week for four weeks. And that right there just showed me so much, you know. And to see him grow over the last couple of years, he's grown into being where he is now. He was able to tick off the goals that he had set through that workshop. So just want to do a big shout out to you, brother, because, um, man, it still blows me away, bro. It really does. <laughs> 
But in terms so much love for you, brother. My bro. But in terms of the question, and he's speaking to there was this for a long period of my life, I struggled with um expressing um affection. And it got to a point where um it was affecting the relationship that I have with my wife now, uh Hinepania, because she's such an affectionate person. And for me, when I wasn't able to to give her the affection that she wanted, it it created a little bit of tension in moments. And I knew exactly um, that it was me, you know, I knew exactly, you know, what I needed to do. And instead of me just saying, like, this is how I am, deal with it, it was more so like, yo, I know um, that you desire more, but there was something that I felt within myself, like I'd get uncomfortable, I'd get triggered, um, every time that there was just an excess of affection, <laughs> right, which is like pretty crazy. But so what Jack is speaking to is that I went into this space within myself that I really wanted to overcome this thing that was limiting the amount of love that could be poured into our container. And what I realized is that this was triggered through um, the lack of affection that I received from my papa. Um, and also um, in previous relationships, I had to fight for affection. And even then, I wouldn't get it. So there was all of this, um, I guess, trauma or this mamai that I had to work through in order for me to release and be able to give fully to Hinepania. And me going through that whole process enabled me to move into a space where now it's like I get showered with it and I do the showering. Because if we're so, um, I guess, afraid or we're so closed off to being like, yo, this is who I am. This is, um, and, and, and you're giving yourself no option to grow or to be better because the way that I thought about it, and those of you who are in relationships probably have triggers within your relationships as well. It's like there's certain things that you love about your partner and there's certain things that, that you're challenged with. And I really came to a point where it's like, actually like relationships, there's an element of compromise that needs to sort of occur from both sides. And in order for her to feel that sense of love, to feel that love from me, is I need to overcome this challenge of affection. And and I really took it on board and I started to do the work. And like I tell you, it's taken, you know, years for me to get to the point where I am now. But the thing with that is that like I said, it comes back to that, that moment that changed me, right? That question is, man, I do want to be better. I do want to grow. And the people that are significant in my life, such as my wife, Hine Pania, is like, all right, what am I willing to do to, to make her happy? And what am I willing to do to make myself happy, right? And I think the biggest, one of the biggest diseases that we have within society, and particularly here in Aotearoa, is that we're so closed-minded and we're so um, stuck in who we are and how we are right now. And we don't give ourselves the room to grow, to overcome these certain things that make us feel a certain way. So when you're triggered or when you're feeling uncomfortable, it's like, bro, sit in that. Right? Sit in that feeling and start to try and uncover what that feeling is, where it's come from, and find the way to let it go. And when you are able to let it go, you are able to fully give into the next thing. And so that's that's the corridor that um, Jacko was sort of talking about. Um, but when you can understand yourself in a better way and you're unafraid to go into these sort of like spaces to better understand yourself, to, to grow yourself into a better version of yourself, not only do you become better, but the people around you are. And in the context of a relationship, like I said, it, compromise is a big part of that. And there's so much sacrifice that needs to happen on either side in order for the container to really be in this abundant, beautiful space. And sometimes it takes it to be messy for it to be better, right? But if there's a constant effort from each side doing what they need to do to make things better for this relationship, but even more so better for, for the individuals, it just enables the the relationship to grow into something more and more each time. 
Um, so thanks for that question, brother. I hope that answered it. Um, but yeah. Bro, that was on and I answered it like perfectly, brother. And um, yeah, because that was sitting on my mind for a while. I was keen to just um, have a bit more of a yarn with you about that. So um, thank you, my bro. Thank you very much. Sweet ass, my bro. And honestly, relationships, like I love relationships. I love talking about it. It's been like the biggest um, lesson in my life, going through just relationship breakups, going through all of these certain things. And it was going through those particular experiences in my life that enabled me to find the words to put to emotions. And it's helped me communicate myself so much better. It's helped me understand my emotions. It's helped me um, step into accountability, step into vulnerability. Um, it's enabled me to own my shit, right? It's enabled me to learn how to forgive, not just the person who I feel has done wrong by me, but I've been able to forgive myself for all the shit that I've done to other people. And so there's been all of these um, real personal um, self-reflective lessons that have come from the relationships that I've been in and the relationship that I am now. I feel it's like probably the best personal development thing that you could ever go through is going through a relationship. And those of you who are in relationships, you'll completely understand just how good it is, but also just how hard it is. And it's a, such a beautiful balance between the masculine and the feminine, right? It's a beautiful balance between te ira tāne and te ira wahine. Or even, you know, those who are, um, you know, together with, with the same gender. Like, even that's, it's, it's the same thing. There's balance within everything. And so, for me, I can get hyped <laughs> on relationships. And the other thing that I do want to touch on while I am here is the quickest way to dissolve um, an altercation within a disagreement uh, with your partner is instead of being fired up about what they've done wrong, try to look at whatever has happened from a perspective of what have you done wrong first? How have you contributed to this whatever has happened? Because when you can move away, move beyond your ego, Right When you can just put your ego down and look at it from that lens of, all right, have I contributed to this? What is my role within this? And when you can find your role and understand um, what is happening here, it's easier to move into the space of apologizing, into the space of um, gaining clarity, into the space of um, creating a safe space to communicate. But when you're in a space where both of you are so caught up on what the other person has done, it makes it so much harder to get to a point of neutrality because there's just so much energy going in the direction. There's a lack of responsibility within those spaces. And it does take a lot of effort to just, you know, move beyond the ego. And even if you feel like you haven't done anything, but you're still getting the shade, you can still sit in a space of being calm you can still feel that your partner might be just acting out of character because they didn't go to sleep um, early enough on monday something else has happened within their space and we know being in relationships that you're with this person almost 24 7 and at the end of the day it's okay for the partners to not feel good all the time it's okay for you to have, you know, a blow up. It's okay for them to have a blow up. But when we're coming into the space of living in a fantasy that everything should be good each and every time, and when one person does something wrong, it just explodes. So those are just some of the things that I, I've learned throughout my experience, and it's something that I still put into practice. When I do something wrong, you know, I'm quick to apologize. When I do something wrong, I'm quick to really communicating and putting in the right effort and energy so that it doesn't happen again. And the thing that I really value about, you know, the relationship that I have with Hinepania is that we both recognize that we do put in so much effort to better ourselves, to diffuse some of the challenges that we have had within our relationship. And there's been big things, there's been little 
little small things and it's got to a point where those little small things just crack us up now <laughs> so um yeah i'm oh, sorry i went on a bit of a tangent there Fano, but i hope there was something in there that, that you fellas can take away from this <laughs> Is there any other questions? Easy. Oh, I've got a question if nobody else does. Yeah, no my. Awesome. Um, kia ora, I'm Selena and uh, I live on the Gold Coast. Um, my question is how I found myself in a little bit of a lull, like a funk, you know, like I'm typically like a real driven person, always got lots of different projects going on. And lately, even prior to this project, um, just kind of feeling like not doing any of it, you know, like just a bit, mm. I'm not sure, clouded. How 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 do we move forward from that um because like you said before you know that motivation is not anything that you can rely on because it's feelings based and that kind of thing but would love to get your take on that yo too much selena the thing that i feel you know when you're in a bit of a rut or when you're in a space of a lull i think it's important to surrender in these moments to just let go um, of trying to um, create something, you know, and instead looking at it in a space of maybe I'm run down, maybe there's a bit of creative block and, and having like more compassion to the space that you're in. And, you know, mm -hmm. we all desire to be just totally switched on each and every day. Right, that's something that makes us feel good is is when we're contributing to our lives in in a good way. But sometimes we have these seasons where we're just not able to to create the right energy or to be able to create in a way that we want to. Right, and and that's a could be a series of things. It could be you know a build up of of working hard. It could be I don't know the moon, <laughs> right? It could be all of these surrounding factors um, that are that are making it difficult to feel like you know you're not moving. But the cool thing that that I've realized in my journey is that when you are in these spaces, reflection is actually quite powerful because you can look back at the things that you have done because you're not actually you, you're not moving backwards. Right. And that's what I feel we get into a little bit of a funk is because, man, we're not moving forward. So does that mean we're moving backwards? But I really believe we never go backwards. Right. We only grow. We sort of plateau. We grow. We plateau. And that's just what life is all about. But what I want to encourage to you, Queen, is that just really utilize this time as a moment of rest. Right. And, and really even go further and just surrender. Right, the feeling of, of being in this lull and actually moving that into a season of rest and just allow yourself to just flow rather than trying to force. Right, there was what I was saying in that corridor is that when we're trying to constantly force things, it actually tires us out even more. We've got to try and move more into a space of being in flow and being pulled. And the way that we do that is we got to let go of what's holding of, of what's holding you back or keeping you where you are. And that could be too much things going on in your mind. There could be other circulating things happening around in your space. But when you can just be, when you can just let it rest, that is when you're going to be refilled and re-inspired to then move forward. Because this is an indication of your cup may be not so full, right? Maybe you need to just sleep more. Maybe you need to look after, you know, um, your health. Maybe it's, you know, just getting out of nature. Maybe you need to look at different ways to just fill up your cup so that you're able to sort of build momentum again so that you can keep on going. It's like you're trying to go to sixth gear because you've been there before, but you're starting from yes. one. Right, so just work your way into it and be okay with the process. 
Um, and you've and you've probably been in the season before, you know, being someone who's been in a creative, someone who's already been a part of projects, you've probably been in a space like this before. And when you get out of it, um, the way that you're able to mitigate that from happening again is just um, managing how you show up each day, right? Trying to acquire a level of balance, and that's different for each and every person. But if you're looking after your health, if you're looking after your mindset, if you're looking after your spiritual health, it's going to be a lot easier to stay consistent with feeling good. Was there any further thoughts to your question? or uh, That was just so awesome. Now, thank you for um validating me on that because you're right like I put the, the pressure on myself and I think we all do like mm -hmm. um but you're right like just take a chill rest and like recoup because yeah I have been um there a lot so I've got that creative mind but just maybe it is that time to just chill for a bit so thank you so much no that's all good and I feel these sort of spaces are, are cool because you know you got the answers and each and every person in here has the answers but you know you do need that reassurance from time to time right and and that's the exact same with me we all have the answers we all know um, what we need to do but just getting that second opinion or, or getting someone who's speaking from a place of understanding just refilling you just gassing you up um, is definitely something that is comforting so um, again, just want to encourage you to um, enjoy just where you're at at the moment because you know once you get fired up again, it's just going to be a massive wave. So um, just build momentum towards that and, and, and ensure that you're filling your cup um, as best as you can. Yeah, Mahi, thank you so much. Kia ora. Uh, hey, Ren. So um, I've just got a quick question. Um, yeah. This is Nick Cage, sorry. Uh, I just wanted to know, um, what is the difference between an intention, like setting an intention for the day um, or week between a goal? Like what's yep. the difference? You mean that? Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. So an intention is something that um, you're you're creating for yourself. Like it's, it's more of a personal um it's more of a personal approach to how you're showing up. And then a goal is sort of something external that you're trying to manifest into your life. But some people have goals such as, um, you know, to be good, right? That, that could be, it's, it's, it's simply um, a shift of how you're viewing things. So particularly for me, my goals are something that I'm trying to create. My goals and dreams are something that I'm trying to bring from what I'm visualizing and manifesting it into a physical, tangible thing. But an intention for me is like my intention is to to show up and, and to be a good person or my intention um, is to be grateful. My intention um, is to uh, have more abundance. When we create an intention, it actually opens our senses up to now look for all of the things that align to that intention, right? But our goal, we can see it as perhaps a destination, right? And when you put a destination into Google Maps, you know, what actually appears? A pathway. So when we set a goal, we're basically setting ourselves a destination and we're trying to find the pathway towards getting there. Whereas an intention is, is very similar, but it's more so what's happening in the present moment. Right, it's not something that is far away. It is something that is already happening um, based on where you are. Man, thank you so much for explaining that. I fully understand that now. I appreciate Man. it. Awesome, and and honestly, I feel intentions are extremely like pal. If you wake up like I want you, I want everyone who's sort of open to hearing this to try it. Wake up tomorrow and set the intention that you know today's going to be a mean day. And when you get to the end of the day, right, because during that day, if you've set that intention from a place of authenticity and like, yo, today's going to be a good day, that's my intention, right? You're now going to sort of look for moments that's going to give you the confirmation that today's a good day. 
you might smile at someone, you might notice someone smiling, you may even notice someone like opening the door, you may even notice someone else doing a kind gesture, you might receive a coffee, you might get money out of nowhere, you might not even have anything bad happen. But when you get to the end of the day, you're now more aware of all of the good things that have happened. And even if bad things have happened, because you set an intention to have a good day, you're going to be more noticeable of the good things. All right? Whereas a goal, you could just be like, oh, my goal here is to get a new job, or my goal here is to have a good day. You're definitely looking for it, but there's way more senses activated when you set an intention. Man, thank you so much. No, you're welcome. Any more part -tai? Oh, kia ora, Barnes. Cheer, kia ora. Uh, it's Jackal the Shackle here, brother. Cheer, tēnā koe, bro. Tēnā koe. Um, first of all, I was going to say uh, nā mihi for dropping all these massive gems, bro. And he's, he's awesome. Mm -hmm. A lot to sort of take on board. Um... As far as my part I goes, it's a it's a bit of a, a bit of a spiel, but um I try and I try and cut it down. Um we actually struggling with uh, this thing for the last uh, couple of years. Um about two years ago, um I uh was put in the uh, unfortunate position where I had to um end my relationship of three years. It wasn't a very uh, perfect relationship. There were mistakes made on uh, both sides, but um, a big reason why it ended was because um, there was not a lot of uh, support shown from my partner um, towards um, my career aspirations. And, um, you know, that really upset me because I was, you know, bending over backwards to support her with, you know, her aspirations and what she needed to do. But, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that is one of the main reasons why it ended among other things. But, um, coming out of it, you know, over the last couple of years, I've had, a, you know, I've been on a more positive headspace, but mm. one thing that I carry now is when I want to pursue other relationships, the, big thing for me that's holding me back is just am I going to have time to you know have a relationship when I'm trying to balance having a relationship with um my my career and often at times I feel like because I'm so focused and driven in you know my career and how it's going at the moment I I feel like I feel as though as I'm not really worthy to have a relationship. Mm. So my so what my part I mm. is really is how can I find ways of working through that? Mm. You know, powerful, bro, and um, you know, thank you for sharing and and your and just stepping into vulnerability there but i know it's not easy to to be open and honest and especially in these kinds of settings but um the thing that comes to mind here bro is is the first word that came up for me um as you're sort of um sharing is that it's the word expectation and i feel there's a lot of expectation um coming from you on how things should be right and and when there's expectation of how things should be you've created the sense that if it's not that you're going to be unhappy or there's going to be challenges and there's the sense of uh being unfulfilled and it's 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 you're the one that is now sitting with that feeling of being unfulfilled and unhappy that there's this big desire for you to have everything that you want right, where well, your career is going good, but there's this desire of you to now, you know, you want to be in a relationship, like I can sense that from you. 
And when we move into um, the space of trying to create a life for ourselves, and this is something that happened to me, is that I was, I, I just got, got through a relationship uh, breakup and I committed myself, you know, to a year of just filling up my cup. And that was the main thing that actually came up for me when I was going through like, man, why did this breakup happen? Why have I been feeling this? And the thing that I felt first and foremost was that my cup wasn't full. And when we have, when we don't have full cups, bro, is that we look for external things to fill it up, right? Whether it's your career or whether it's your partner, it's like when you're not feeling full, when you're not feeling happy, you now expect these things around you to fill up your cup to make it better, right? You would probably, in that relationship that you had a few years ago, is you would probably said, you know, as you did say, you felt that you were bending over backwards to support her. But now you were waiting for her to give something back. And when she didn't, that's when you'd get very upset. So what we got in that situation there, and I'm speaking from experience too, bro, this has happened to me and that's why I'm sharing it with you from a place of reflection and, and hopefully add value to you as you move into a next relationship. But when we're moving in that kind of space, bro, is that we now love with expectations. That only if you love, if only if you do this for me, then I'll feel your love, right? And you've now moved away from, if you're doing that from a space of genuineness in terms of, yeah, I want to support them, then you're not really waiting for anything to come back. There's no expectation because you're doing that from the kindness of your heart. And when you're wanting something back, there's a reason for that is because you're not feeling satisfied or you're not being happy. So within your relationships moving forward, bro, the most relationship that is most important is yourself. Once you start to build this relationship with yourself, understand yourself better, figure out what makes you happy just on your own, you're now moving into a new vibration, bro. You're moving into a new space where you can have more room and space for other people to come into your life. And there'll be moments where you'll still love with, with conditions that, yep, of I'll, I'll feel way more attracted to you. I'll feel made way more loving to you if this, this, and this happens. But when you start to now acknowledge that, you're going to start working at these things as to if these things don't come or if this doesn't happen, it's now on you to be like, cool, let me just make sure that my cup is full and now you're not too worried about those things happening. All right? Does that make sense to you, bro? All right, brother. I think and needed to hear bro and and honestly bro like this is the work you know like this is the mahi when we're when we're when we're all looking for something external to make us feel a particular way whether it's validated to feel worthy all i can say is that each and every one of you are just completely vulnerable to being unhappy right because you've given so much power to something external whether it's a relationship whether it's you know a career that if it's not coming from these um, places, you're now choosing to be in a, in a state of suffering, right? In a state of being unhappy. But when you can regain their power back and being like, yo, man, I feel good. I am worthy. I am deserving. That anything else that comes from that is only going to improve the quality of your life because your life is already at a good space. And this is what happened when... I um, attracted or me and Hinepania came together. Like I said, I'd gone through a series of rough relationships. I put all of this energy and time into myself, bro, and I was honestly feeling so good. But it got to a point in my journey where I was alcohol-free, I, I was vegan, I was voluntary time to, um, to young people, you know, I was living at home with my parents. Like, all of these, like, I started to look at the person that I had become, and I legit thought that, man, I don't think anyone would be attracted to someone like me because the way that I saw it is that I'm too clean, right? Like I'm just too much in this green space where it'll be hard for anyone to even relate to me. And then I just completely surrendered. I just let it go. And I was like, oh, I just accepted that, you know, a person isn't even going to come into my life with where I'm at in life at the moment. And I can honestly just be so open and transparent with each and every one of you. The moment that I let that go, it would have been like within a week later, 
I walked into a gym with my sister and my now wife was standing at the desk. And that night we went on a date together and we've been together ever since. And this only happened, I believe, is because I was in a good space and I let go of anything trying to make my life better from an external perspective. So for me, speaking to you, bro, it's like this is where I can offer my experience so that you're able to to really not worry about the things that you really want now when you need to worry about who you are now, right? And how you can be better, how you can heal, how you can work through these things that are holding you back, right? To get to a space where you're worthy. I don't know who you need to hear it from, bro, but you are worthy, <laughs> right? You are deserving of, of a loving relationship, bro. You are deserving of all the success within your career. Like you're already that. But there's something in you, bro, that needs to click in order for you to believe that yourself. And this is the work, bro. This is what I want you to now be inspired by, is how can you access that feeling? Look at the things that you like to do in your life, right? Whether it's, you know, going to nature, whether it's being around your friends, you know, and look at the things that aren't adding value to your life. And do you desire this feeling of feeling good so much so that you're willing to let go of the bad things and do more of the good things. And once you can get move into that direction of letting go and grabbing onto the good things, that's when you'll start to feel that your cup is not only being fooled, but it's being overflowed. And that's the, that's the zone, that's the space that I want to encourage you and those of you who hear this story within what I'm sharing to, to aspire to do. Beautifully said, man. Beautiful. No, I, I really appreciate that, Adam, bro. I, you know, I, I'm just taking it all in at the moment. It's a lot to sort of record it all itself. It's just a lot to take in, but I'll definitely take it on board. Beautiful, bro. I and like, really like, appreciate your words, bro. Like, while you're talking, bro, like, I've legit got goosebumps going on right now, right? Because I can sense that you're just in a space of receiving, you know? Like, you, you're so keen to really soak in all of what has been expressed in the space, and, and you're in a space of, of wanting to make the shifts that you need to, Right, and, and what I want to encourage you from that space, bro, is embrace this feeling that you're experiencing at the moment. Right, make a decision tonight and being like, man, this feels good. I know I got some shit to work through, but I back myself to work through it. And thanks for your, again, bro, your transparency and your vulnerability to to take this corridor um, into this direction, bro. So it was just cool to hear that, um, not in a sense of, um, you know, being overjoyed about what you're going through, but it was more so around, man, that's, you're, you're speaking my old story, bro. You know, like you're speaking my old story. So I've got probably enough time for for one or two more questions. Um, and feel free to take this anyway <laughs> or or whatever it is that you might want to share, uh, whether you're going through something personally as well or just want to have some further thoughts shared to to some current thoughts that you're having. Cool. No more questions. Hi, Rans. Um, it's um, my girl Susan here. Um, oh, I've, I've heard. I only just come into the chat before, and 
you weren't even talking to me, but I was taking it in as it's in as well. And um, you're sort of answering some questions for me as well. Um, so thank you for that. And um, but I just got one thing that I wanted to um bring up. So um, with like childhood childhood trauma, how do you deal with that? Like um, for instance. I'm now 25, and um, I've been doing counselling and therapy throughout my whole life. But, like, and it, I guess it helped at the time, but, like, I still got it you're inside me. You're echoing a little bit. Oh. You got another device. So is, is it okay now? Yeah. Oh, did you get any of what I said so far? I heard that you said that you were 25, um, but I didn't hear the after from that. Um, yeah, I'm 25 now, and I've been doing counselling and therapy most of my life, and um, it helped at the time, but I still got it, like what I was trying to um, deal with, you know, and I, and I know what's there, and I think it's stopping me from actually loving myself. And knowing myself, who I really am, and I really want to fix it, yep. but I don't know how. Sweet. I, I can offer some calls uh, that, that might be of, um, that might help, help you and those who may be going through something similar. When we think about trauma, all right, oh, is anyone else getting that lag? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, up. bro. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of the lag. Oh, yeah, sweet, but it's all good now, eh? Yeah, that's good. All right. Um, yeah, so when we're thinking about um, trauma and, and things that we've gone through in our lives, um, immediately I would like um, an invitation here to, to find comfort in that you're not the only one. Each and every person within the space and within the world has some level of challenge um, that's impacted their life in some way. So we can find comfort knowing that we're not isolated, feeling like, man, we're the, I'm the only one going through this. I'm the only one troubled. I'm the only one feeling this way. There's a level of comfort that you can receive knowing that, man, you're someone else is going through not maybe the same thing, but maybe even something worse, right? And it's a way to sort of like shift again um, your energy to move from um, being so focused on yourself to then moving it to being more open um, and, and being able to connect with other people. And the other thing that I've recently come to sort of like think about when it comes to trauma is that, and this is only in reflection of things that I've been through, but when things happen to us, we got to understand that it's happened to us from the limited perception of life that we have, right? So what I mean by that is that say something has happened to you at the age of nine, right? When that event or when that situation has happened, you're only seeing it through the lens of a nine-year-old, right? And so when you see it through the lens of a nine-year-old, you have very little understanding or very little um, context of why things are happening in the way that they are. And it doesn't mean to say that what is happening should be happening, but the reason why trauma continues to exist throughout our lives is because that significant event is still very real to us, as if you were that nine-year-old person. And the reason why I also believe that trauma continues to exist is that when that event happens, it triggers a certain emotion right, where you feel either um, very bad, um, you go through all of these different things. And so now what happens is that when you carry on life and anything slightly that is related to that emotion brings all of it back up, right? So some a, a single event has now become a memory, has become a trauma, and it's become imprinted in your state of being. So when anything happens that is aligned to that, it relives it, right? You either morph back into that nine-year-old and you sort of um, go through the suffering and the pain um, of what has occurred, right? And it could be as something as heavy or it could be something light because 
there's no way we can ever measure our trauma towards someone else's. There's no way you can be like, bro, no, I've gone through way worse than you because whatever it is that we go through is what we go through. And there's no way we can ever compare that with other people. So the thing that I want to, again, just place here as an invitation as a way to view things that could, um, I guess, alleviate the weight is that we must find the courage to look at what has happened through a broader perspective of life now, right? So say it happened at the age of nine, but now you're 25. You've got way more understanding of life now. You've probably got more of an understanding of what has happened. But whenever you look at it, you're viewing it as a nine-year-old. So my encouragement here is how can you view this as a 25-year-old with everything else that you've gone through, right? Looking at who was involved. What did they go through in order for this situation to happen, right? Something that I'll share with you guys is something as little that happened, um, an experience that I'll share that where I've applied this is that my papa one evening, I went to go and kiss my mum and dad goodnight and I went to go and kiss my dad goodnight and he pulled away from me. And that was a sort of like a feeling of rejection or feeling of um, feeling undeserving. And because of that event, it really started to seep through a lot of areas of my life, like me uh, being a people pleaser, me trying to be someone to fit into these different circles. All of these things just started to happen because of this one event that I didn't even really well, had too much awareness of. But when it got to a point in my later years where I was able to realize, man, you know, this memory or this trauma or this moment has really played out in my life. And I got to a point where I thought that it was holding me back, similar to where you are now, right? But then I started to look at, you know, this experience or this trauma as like, there's no way that me at the age that I was could even understand what was happening. All I saw was that this happened to me or this happened. Right. But now going through life, I understand that, bro, my dad didn't, he, he still loves me, but he was only loving me with how he knew. Right. Because of what he went through with his father, because of the journey that he's been on. And I started to understand as to like why that actually happened. And I moved into a space of forgiveness of him and even myself for carrying that. Right. So this is just, again, another personal example that that's happened in my life, that's helped me reshape how I look at things, right? But if, in order for us to heal through trauma, is we must first detach ourselves from it and start to look at it from a different perspective, right? Seeing it from a high perspective, seeing it from a space of getting the support from other people that can help bring more light to the situation, right? And when we can find comfort or a level of at least understanding it enables us to let that go. It's a tomaha space, right? It, it is a heavy kind of space to look at. Um, it does carry a lot of weight, but in order to make that weight lighter, um, it does take visiting it, but it takes visiting it with an intention of moving beyond it. I hope that makes sense for you. Yeah, thank you. That was awesome. Hi, Rib. I'm Missy. Tinakui. I hail from Ngatipongunu, Ngapu Nui Tonu. I just love the energy that you actually have, that matrix that you um, are sharing with us. I just want to know like, how you keep your breath of neutrality. I've been listening to it and feeling that vibration within your energy. So, yeah, kia ora. Kia tenakui, Missy. Um, in terms of that, I feel I just have a very um, deep passion for for people, um, also a deep passion for life. And, and when I speak, I feel that's what's coming out, is like there's this genuine aroha and kia. And um, going through certain things in life, you know, such as challenges, there's it, it really is a character builder 
and and going through things and and coming out the other side and not only seeing and feeling better but knowing that man there's so much power within our story and there's so much power within communication that is this now new level of excitement and there's some people within the space here that that know me prior to um any of of who i am like today you know there's this this nay you know renee who's who, you know who's a long time friend um the person who created the the um the girl beavers leslie hall like you know these are like long time friends of my sisters and and they've been able to see me go through all of these different transitions in life where i've completely just transformed into like the version that i am today and so when i speak i'm speaking on behalf of all of these different significant shifts that have enabled me to to really see life as as a sense of abundance and for me, like, I, I really desire that for people, but I can't come in here and be like, everyone do this, do that, do this, do that. And if you don't do it, your life's not going to be, you know, your life's going to be bad. I come in with the intention of when I speak, the way where it comes from is that I honestly feel that my words are just landing on a table, Right. And when I present it on a table, it's now there as an invitation or as an offering for the people who are listening or tuning in to just grab whatever is resonating with them, right? There's some direct forms of communication, but for me, I communicate in a, as a way of an invitation or as a way of an offering. And with that comes the energy um, that I'm able to present uh, whenever I get the opportunity and privilege um, to share kōrero. Okay. And I was listening to the utter of your heart. Mm. And then, then I, I actually, I feel the ihu and the ahumatu are within you. So, yeah, mm. I really appreciate what you said. Mauri ora. Mauri ora, missi. Um, man, beautiful. Really did... Um, receive uh, that kōrero, that mihi, um, and there's a beautiful tone within your reo as well, um, e hoa, so mihi ana. So, so I'll probably take one more question, um, if anyone has any, uh, before I go back to my whānau. <laughs> Cool. Sweet. That's us, eh? Was there a question? Cheer, cheer, oh, yeah. Just me, cheer. my bro. Cheer, cuz. I, bro, I just wanted to jump in here, bro, on, on behalf of, um, well, you know, of the, I guess, the founders and, and, and everyone who's in here as well, all our Beaver Fano. Just uh, thank you, bro, for um, taking your time, bro, um, out to share your heart with us, um, to speak to everyone in here um you know take time away from your wife and your and your beautiful son as well bro so i just want to mihi to you bro and say thank you for sharing all of your wisdom bro and just just having this time with us bro it's really appreciated my cuz true thank you brother Riyapo. and it's been a privilege uh to be in here Fano, and i'm um, really keen to continue to build um what this space here could um turn out to be for for myself and even furthermore for you guys and and really want to continue to try and show up authentically and, and bring as much value as I can. Um, big shout out to my bro Alchemist who I can see up in here um, and also the other familiar um, names and, and voices and faces uh, that are here as well. So um, thank you so much for this time. I do really hope uh, there was some value um, expressed here. Uh, something that might be cool is if you can put in the you know chit chat, you know, what's probably the biggest thing that you've taken away from this kōrero? You know, so those of who haven't uh, came in here, they could sort of get some value and some capacity. So um, that'll be cool if you fellas can just put in one takeaway, um, just to also solidify the lesson um, when you sort of bring more awareness to taking in um, what has been shared. And last thing to those who have um, shared uh, questions or who asked the question, um, just again, big mahi to you guys for stepping into that space. Um, and bringing more value uh, to this to this evening, and also big shout out to our um, 
you know, to our lady beavers. I know that's been like a big thing for uh, for this project. So um, big shout out to the sister Leslie um, and to the others who who helped uh, bring that to life. So Emihiana, uh, I'll be in and out throughout the week, um, but also that's us again uh, next Monday. So ngā mihi nui uh, and pō māri e kia tātou katoa. Ciao, brother. Ciao, brother. Shout out, Rans. That was on. Yeah, but...